Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this video, we're going to be covering iNeo's latest device, the iNeo Air Plus. The iNeo Air Plus joins the ranks of one of the smallest 6800U-based devices you can get on the market, its nearest competitor being the GPD Win 4. As such, the iNeo team did an excellent job overall to produce the current most powerful APU packed into the smallest package possible, the ideal of power and convenience, yet crammed with as much as they possibly could, a 3S1P 46Wh battery, Pretty much the largest you can do. A very capable thermal solution that has no problems running at 28 watt at lengths of time staying clean under 80 degrees Celsius. I'd personally recommend only doing 28 watt while plugged in or docked. I'll talk about thermals more later on in this video. Just a quick note, the iNeo Air Plus caps the TDP at a 28 watt ceiling, so you won't be able to push it further than that, and honestly that's fine. But just so you know, you won't be pushing it further than that. Overall, I'm actually a huge fan of what the iNeo team has done here. If you're the type of person that wants a lightweight, compact x86 gaming handheld, but you also want to make sure you get the absolute best performance possible, this should be in your list to consider. Let's take a deeper look at the iNeo Air Plus. So in this particular segment, we're going to take a look at the iSpace app, and this is pretty familiar to a lot of different people that have a lot of different iNeo devices, but in case you haven't seen it, I'll briefly go over it. If you were to update the app and it is no longer in Chinese, one of the things you can quickly do is go to the iNeo icon up here, and then go down to language, and then select your language. If on the bottom it says go to international, make sure you go ahead and change that. If it says go to China, you're already fine. You're already in the international build of the iSpace app. That's just a little brief thing to get people up to speed a lot faster. Now, largely, I would say arguably that this is going to be the segment that a lot of people are going to be using is the fast TDP controls here. So we're going to go through a few of them and you see game balance power saving. The one thing to note is that all of these settings here are technically a PL1 setting of 10 watt and PL2 is typically 10% to 20% higher. So this is going to be around 12 watt. Uh, for game, it's going to be 20 to 22 watt. Now, uh, PL1 and PL2 is an Intel nomenclature. This would typically be fast and slow settings in AMD. Uh, likewise, if you go to balance, it's going to, for about 28 seconds, up, up clock to about 17 watt. And then after 28 seconds, come down to about 15 watt. Then there is what uh, a lot of people like is called pro mode. You can see right now it's at 28 watt. But if we go ahead and press Y, you're actually going to be able to select any particular custom TDP that you want here. So this is going to be something that maybe you want to do 18 watt for yourself. And that's something that you want to generally ride at. Now, 18 watt is something that I recommend. Now, this is something that we should have already covered in the video, that if we took a look at the thermals of the device itself, if you're connected to a charger, that's pretty much the only way that I would recommend running at 28, 28 watt and the battery should be at 100% because if it's not at 100% that means that the battery is going to be recharging while also powering the device at the same time and then you're going to get a little bit of extra heat and again this is something that we've already touched base with uh, through the earlier side of the video when we're talking about batteries and thermals but that's just something I want to touch base on really quickly so this is a quick way to change TDP now that is something that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in now if we take a look over here into the assistant side this is where we're going to get into the meat and potato side a little bit more. One thing I want to quickly mention is if I just tap the iNeo button right here, you can see this all went away. Now if I just tap it, we're just going to get a quick little menu over here. And this will overlay on a lot of windows that already have uh, basically borderless window mode. The thing to note here is that Windows, even if you choose exclusive full screen mode, unless you're disabling full screen optimizations, that it will typically still be running through the Windows DWM compositor. So this will still come up just fine. On the bottom right, you can see I chose to uh, put the joystick mouse mode here. And this is something that I like to have just because it makes it easier to use. So from here, you can actually just go ahead and, you know, make use of the mouse very easily. So A is left click, uh, X is right click, and that will be able to make you navigate on the screen a lot better than trying to fudge your way through using your finger. So that's something that I particularly enjoy using. The other part of that is that if you're in this mode and you start up a game you could have competing inputs where you're pushing left and it's actually moving the mouse and also the analog stick at the same time so what you can do is just quickly bring this up and turn it off and you can say that it's been disabled and now this no longer works as the mouse at this point if you want to get back into the iNeo Air, uh, iSpace app itself you're going to hold down this i button and jump into here in this assistant part, there's a few part that things that we have to touch base on. This is the application center. And if we go over to total, there's a few different apps in here that are really good. You can see here, there's the agile mouse. I didn't even download this because I typically use the default mouse emulation that's already in the iSpace app. But if you wanted to touch base on that and kind of adjust the mouse emulation, how you want 
in terms of acceleration and curve, you can do it that way. Then there's a smart fan app here where you can control the fan curve yourself. Now, the one thing to be careful here is that if you're pushing this device to 28 watt, you don't want to challenge that by making the fan not spin up. At 28 watt, this, the, the fan will be noticeably audible, but if you wanted to control this to be at like 15 watt to 18 watt and have a, uh, a better experience in terms of making the fan less audible, this is gonna be the direction that you wanna go. Then there's a the smart TDP app, and this is something that I touched base with in previous videos that I've touched base on lots of different applications that can do uh, auto TDP. The Smart TDP app still needs a little bit of work from the INEO side because it still only targets the GPU side of it, meaning that it will ma statically clock the GPU based on the frame rate, and it can get messed up because if you're trying to target a 60 FPS target and the game is incapable of doing that, it'll keep on bumping the GPU clock up, thus wasting power, thus giving you worse performance. So that's the only thing that you should be paying attention to, that the Smart TDP app that is built into the iSpace app is not absolutely perfect, but I still do recommend it, and it's something that you should kind of explore. Here is the master controller part, and this is where you can very briefly just change some of the default settings that are here, so you have the joystick sensitivity. As it is, the most of the default settings are absolutely perfect for me, so I don't really change anything. This is automatic. This is for making, if you wanted to make these buttons to be turbo. And then in custom, this is self-explanatory. So right now we have a very Xbox-like, Dreamcast, Sega-like format. Here we can see Japanese style, and that's basically just Nintendo, and this would make it Nintendo style. I'm gonna keep it as Xbox style, and then Shock, you can see this is for Rumble. Right now we have it set to middle, and then Gyro is off for me, but if you wanted to use Gyro controls to the iSpace app, that's how you're gonna go ahead and enable it. Then this particular box right here, we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit of more feature and functionality. There are additional buttons right here, these three little dots, these are buttons as well. And what you can do is you can actually make them do other things. So we're gonna go ahead and do custom shoulder key, and we're gonna see some of the things that you can do. So if you press or hold, so pressing will bring up the on-screen keyboard, but you can have it do something else here. Now, one thing that I've wanted from the AYA space, the AYA team is being able to make these buttons be custom to whatever you want. Right now, they're basically defaulting to a few different things. So basically you have press and hold as two different uh, actions that you can choose, and those LC and RC buttons are additional functionality that you can do. Uh, and then we also have the RGB lighting. I have it disabled right now, and you can just turn it on. And when you turn it on, these LEDs glow. And you can change the colors and stuff, so that's really cool from the iSpace app as well. And that's pretty much it for the iSpace app. I just wanted to quickly just jump through it. There are a lot of different quick settings that you can do right here. Obviously, that when you bring up here, they'll bring up your quick settings, and you can bring up the other ones that are over here as well, which will translate to here. So if you go ahead and just say Windows, uh, not that I want that, but if we bring that up and go over here, you can see Windows is right there. So it's a really cool uh, feature set from the iNeo team to have the iSpace app. It makes getting to things pretty quick and rapid. So that's this particular segment on the iSpace app itself. All right, let's start getting into the build quality section of the iNeo Air Plus. Since the iNeo 2, the things that the iNeo team has been doing, they've just been banging on all the cylinders. There are a few little minor grievances that I have with it. They're not really that big, but I'll just mention them right here. For the analog sticks, one of the things that I prefer is a concavity to the analog sticks. This is more convex. That hasn't been that big of a problem while I've been using it, this for like over a week now. I haven't had any problems. It's really fantastic. We're going to take a look at how this actually responds via a tool. So we're going to take a look at the sensitivity and also the circularity that the INEO team just really wants to have. But we might be able to compensate around that with calibrating the analog sticks with a uh, cap for the analog stick while having the cap on and then calibrating over it. For the D-pad, it's actually really nice here. We're gonna to touch more based on that in just a second. We have our start and select button. On the bottom, this is again, a thing that I wish that they would have changed, but this is kind of standard fare for a lot of things. So we have downward facing speakers and they are really good. We have our USB-C charging here and that charges from both. I've, chest, I've tested charging from both spots and what I got was around 15 watt charging from either side. When we take a look at the graph, what we're gonna see is that the total charging that we see here is around three hours of charge, and that was charged with the internal charger that they included along with the cable, and it didn't matter if I used the top or the bottom, it was basically charging at around 15 watt, uh, and to do the 46 watt hour battery, take around three hours to fully charge. Here we have the micro SD card door, and this I just, I love, I love this, just the, the fit and finish of it, how it goes back together. 
Uh, what's nice is the micro SD card speeds are excellent. So if we bring up, so we're gonna quickly look here. We have uh, 4.2 gigabytes a second reads and 2.3 gigabytes a second writes. Uh, these are 4K write, uh, read and writes here. The number's gonna be a lot lower, but these are actually very good for an SSD. And then this is the micro SD card slot. Now, don't pay attention too much to the right because the micro SD card that I have here is pretty much filled to capacity. So you're going to get really low write speeds just because it's mostly filled. But take a look at those read speeds from that micro SD card slot. 125 megabytes a second, which is perfect for the A2 card that I have on here. So thumbs up for that micro SD card. If we go along on the outer side, we see these analog triggers. Now, these are honestly a thing of beauty. These are probably one of my favorite analog triggers to date. The amount of tension, how they feel, and the complete accuracy. You will not hit 100% of the uh, range on this until you bottom out on this, and it's perfect every time. I'll be able to demonstrate that in a moment. On the back here, we can see the heatsink and fan. Now, there's a few things that we have to unpack here. Okay, so we're gonna talk about thermals, and we're gonna talk a little bit about battery life. So there's the thermals of the heatsink and fan and how well that operates for the device itself. So we're gonna talk about a few things here. Now, I'm gonna show you a graph with regard to the thermals of this device. And we're gonna talk about the internal thermals of the device first. So at 15 watt, we're comfortably under 70 degrees Celsius the entire time I had the bench running. And if we go up to 28 watt, we can see that it is comfortably under 80 degrees Celsius. It's mostly hovering around 76 or 77 degrees Celsius, which is completely fine for this device to be running at those temperatures. So now that we talked about the internal thermals of this device, the thing that we have to talk about next is the battery. So there's a few things that we have to discuss here. Number one is, if we were to take a look at the available TDPs that we can run this device at, obviously you can go up to 28 watt via their own IS based tool. And it satisfies that 28 watt the entire time without any problems whatsoever. But having said that, this device really is more comfortable to be running at 15 watt to 18 watt TDP while on battery. And you're gonna wanna do that because even at 15 watt TDP, you're gonna be getting around uh, 90 minutes of battery life on this 46 watt hour battery. However, if we were to take a look at the thermal scans of this device at 28 watt when it's running off a of battery, we can see that the battery portion right here is actually heating up considerably. So not only are we getting heat, which would be from the right hand side where you hold it with your right hand, but we're also going to be getting heat that is spilling over to where you hold it in your left hand. Even with how far off the grips are, we're actually going to be seeing heat thermally transferred to the outside casing right where your grip is. This is only at 28 watt, so don't think that this is going to happen all the time. If you're running on battery, it is recommendable to run at 15 to 18 watt. And in those TDPs, even though in the thermal scans, you can see that you can still see where the battery is heating up, it is not thermally transferring over to where your hand is holding the device. Likewise, for the heatsink and fan, it is not doing that either. So it's actually cool to hold it while in your hand in the grips at 15 to 18 watt. And that's also where you're gonna be getting around 90 minutes of battery life in that 15 to 18 watt uh, TDP zone. If you go up to 28 watt, you're going to get around 50 minutes of battery life. So it is important to think about this in a few different ways. If you want to play on the iNeo Air Plus at 28 watt, number one, I would recommend that you're actually running this at 100% battery and plugged in. And at that point, when you're plugged in and on battery, what's going to happen is that you're actually not going to have the battery in use at all. And if we take a look at another thermal scan, you can see that even at 28 watt, while it's running but connected to a charger, that the battery is not in use at all. And there is absolutely zero thermal activity coming from the battery while plugged in, indicating that it's bypassing the battery altogether, uh, which is nice to see visually, thermally, but also just as it should operate. And again, we can just take a look at the battery life here, uh, the battery graph curve here. At 28 watt, you're gonna be experiencing around 50 minutes of battery life. At 15 to 18 watt, you're gonna be around 90 minutes of battery life. And again, that is where it finds itself in the comfortable zone is 15 to 18 watt. Very good to have on battery thermally as well for this device and it's where it finds its sweet spot. If you wanted to go higher, I would really recommend being plugged in. At this point, let's go ahead and take a look at the controls themselves. All right, so now we're gonna be taking a look at the controls themselves. So you can see, once again, this is where they, the INEO team just loves having, uh, showing this circularity test where there's very little average error here. This is only showing circularity. For what it's worth, I prefer that these analog sticks extend past the circle a little bit. There are gonna be some games where you'll find that not having that is going to be a problem. However, 
you can get around it by uh, potentially putting on a switch stick cover and then calibrating the analog sticks after that. And what you're going to find is those analog stick caps are going to uh, basically make the, the analog sticks wider so that when you're calibrating and then remove the analog stick cover, you're going to be able to have a wider area around here. So that's one little trick that you can do to improve that. If it's a problem for you, if this is something that you like, then this is going to be something that you are going to enjoy. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these analog triggers because this is something that's just really nice. So you can see right here that if we just take a look at the number slowly going up, you can see that I don't bottom out at a full one reading until I'm basically touching the end of this. The amount of finesse needed like you can see, I'm like halfway to press right here. And we're about 0.6. It may seem like, look how much little space there is, but it's still not fully bottomed out. This is so super calibrated and nice. Just an absolute pleasure to use these analog triggers. They are, without a doubt, one of my favorites across any handle. They're just so, so nice. Uh, on top of that are the very crunchy, very responsive membrane-based face buttons. I have really no concerns with these whatsoever. These are truly excellent. And then the D-pad. The D-pad is actually really nice. You can see me rolling around here. Uh, if I push in the center, I can't... There's no way I can hit all four of these buttons. I can only roll over to two at a time. Uh, the D-pad itself is, is really fantastic. Even though it seems like a newer iteration of INEO's D-pad, I feel like, once again, the INEO team has done a really sensational time using membrane-based D-pads, which they seem to prefer as well. So that's pretty much the general scope of the build quality of the INEO Air Plus. Overall, it's just a really fantastic device. The only other thing that we need to talk about right now is the display, and we'll go ahead and jump into that right now. All right, so very quickly, we're going to talk about the display here. Now, it, by default, it only has a 60 hertz mode. I have 40 hertz mode here, but that doesn't actually work. But we do have uh, 46, 48. You could actually do 45 hertz as well, but you're going to start getting a little bit of rollover there happening. What I typically prefer is going to 48 hertz mode, and this will make sure that if you need a game that you only want to run at 48 FPS, it'll actually display nicely inside of that. But we're going to go ahead and select 60 hertz right here right now, and this is going to be the default for the uh, panel. The other thing to touch base on, because this panel is basically a portrait-based panel, so instead of being 1920 by 1080, it is 1080 by 1920. What this means is that older PC games will have a little bit of difficulty running, so you will need to wrap those. And I've covered that in previous videos as well, but if you try to run older games, DirectX 8 games will display, but basically they're going to be running at like half, they're going to be, you're going to see half of the screen running over here. And if you run older DirectX games, it's pretty much just going to crash out. Now, that's just one thing that I want to say that it's not really a fault of the INEO itself. It's just a portrait based panel. You just need to wrap these games so that you can actually play them. Just so I can briefly show you what I mean. Now, I have this game in Steam, but if you were at this game in like uh, GOG, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to browse to the local file. You basically want to get to the root directory of where the game is installed. So you can see here's Abe Win, and these are where all the files are. Now, I've already gone ahead and downloaded the director uh, config wrapper for it. So we're going to go ahead and skip this because it's already uh, in, in there that I've already installed it. Now that that's there, we can go ahead and run abe's odyssey and not have any particular issue running the game so we'll go here and i'll click play and then you'll see that the game is running now the only thing that other thing that you need to you know make note of here is that obviously uh all of these are 360 inputs and a lot of older pc games have no idea whatsoever about running games with x input so you would need some type of wrapper for the controllers as well now you could do that inside steam with steam input but you can do it with Anti-Micro, you can do it with uh, a joy to key you can do it with a bunch of different applications. But um, that's basically just showing you that this obviously works. And you can rapidly get older games to work as well. And again, I covered this in an, in an older video. Just wanted to briefly talk about this. So that's it for my review on the INEO Air Plus. It truly is an excellent handheld. The biggest problem, honestly, just seems to be the timing of when this device is going to get released. As I touched on earlier in the video, the core components of the device are rock solid. Excellent thermals, the biggest battery you could shove in a small space as possible, an excellent, albeit portrait-based display, fantastic D-pad, excellent analog stick, and triggers with sick fidelity, all of that contained in one of the smallest packages possible. The IONEO team did a great job on this handheld. My personal recommendation is to use the device at 15 to 18 watt while in handheld state and reserve 28 watt when the device is docked. 
if the current landscape of handheld devices releasing in the near future gives you pause, I can understand where you're coming from. I would only say that there aren't that many devices in this size class, and this device does everything very well in that category. If this device is in your short list of handhelds you were looking at, I can easily recommend it. And that's it for this video. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.